This is part three of the basics of GIMP and what we want to do now is see if we can do a little more to pull our subject out from the background, perhaps even blur the background or apply effects uh, to different parts of the image. We could easily of course blur the whole thing, all we got to do is go filters, blur, I like the Gaussian blur. We can drag the slider up and we can actually see the blur happening. Um, but we don't want to do that, I just want that background blurred. So one way, a new way actually, to pull the background away from the foreground is to use the uh, one of the selection tools. And that's it, the foreground select tool. So what we do with that is we start, you see we've actually got what looks like the lasso tool here. And all we do is do a quick outline. We'll just take a minute here. Thank you for your patience. And Oh, I made a bit of a mess there. That's okay, this doesn't have to be perfect. Charles won't mind. Okay, we'll go around here, almost done. Loop around and up. And hit enter when you're done. And there we go, you can see that blue color, it's, uh, that's, that's what it's uh, masked out as the obvious background. Uh, and then it switches to the pen tool. And we can actually, so we can start drawing with the foreground color. And what we're doing is drawing over the areas that are the foreground. What I'm actually gonna do here is increase the size of the stroke with the pen and we'll just really darken these in and what we can do oh i made a bit of a mess there that's okay go down there a bit we'll just kind of do a quick outline and then what i'm going to do is make it smaller and fine tune this a little bit we'll draw up in here just so it knows that we also want to include that I have to make it even smaller actually, uh, or what I can do is zoom in. So we can go to 100% and uh, yeah, let's make that a little bit smaller still. And I can color in some of these areas as well too. Okay, so once we've got that, I, I hit enter. And it's doing its own thing right now. This might take a minute. Let's zoom back out. Hopefully I don't crash it. No, I better wait. Yeah, let's just wait. Okay, we'll zoom out and see what we got here. Uh, control, scroll. Hey, it did a pretty good job actually. Now the hand, his hand got blocked out. So what we'll do is we'll draw his hand back in and I'll just uh, maybe increase the stroke size a bit, not too big, and we'll draw. And it'll figure out pretty quickly that that's gotta be included. Yeah, there we go. This is really nice that we can add to it and keep working on it, but it looks like the wing, uh, the wings were done very well. We got one little problem around the edges here, but I'm not gonna worry about that. That's not gonna matter with the snow, but you could go in and fix that. And actually one of the things you do is we draw the background out of this. And so uh, his glove was fairly dark. I don't know if that's quite right, but let's, uh, let's hit select when we're all ready to go. Uh, we'll just assume that we've got, oh yes, it's done the glove quite nicely. And so there we go. We've we've got this uh, we've got this looking pretty effective. Um, now what we can do is we can take that selection, and we can go select float. This is how I like to work on it. There's there's many ways. This is this is just one of many ways. With that floating selected layer here, I'll click down here on the new layer button, and what that will do is turn that floating layer into a new layer. And look at that, we've got this, uh, this ba the background fully removed. So if I were to bring the background in, what happens, oh yeah, it looks a little bit funny. Okay, if I bring the background in, you can see that background is a little more subtle because it doesn't have the changes. I actually like that. What I'm gonna do now, it gives it a little more natural look and it also makes the colors a little more subtle. I'm gonna duplicate that back layer again just because I'm, I'm going to work on this layer now. I'm, I'm just going to, I'm not going to bother with this, uh, uh, with this, this layer here. It's, it's kind of a damaged layer anyway. We've cut a piece out of it. So I'll take this copy of the background. And if I wanted to, I could enhance these colors. But what I'm going to do initially is just go filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And now what we'll see happening, well, just watch. As we move this, we see the background blur, but not the foreground. And that actually looks quite effective. I like it, oh, I don't know, maybe right about there. We want to still make it look like we're up in the mountains. And I'll click okay. And now the now it really pops out. The edge uh, is maybe a little bit fuzzy. I'm not gonna worry too much about that. It's a little bit unnatural looking. That might be something that requires some tweaking. Um, and, and maybe you want the background colors to, to pop out uh, a little more. So you could of course go colors, curves, and we could do the same things we did before. 
and and brighten those up a little bit or sharpen them as well too. Uh, sharpen the colors, I, uh, I I should say, not to, yeah, not the actual pixels. That looks okay. That's it's not bad. I, I I'm I'm impressed with that. So two things we'll do now is we'll go save, which saves it in the native format, which is XCF. But if we want to use this say, in a website, for example, we would need to export it. And so I would go File, Export. And it's defaulting to PNG. PNG is fantastic if you want to preserve transparency. Uh, it's a non-lossy format, which is also very nice. But the files, especially of photos, tend to be fairly large. So we can compress it a little bit better if we select JPEG. We have to type that in manually. So there's JPEG. We'll click Export. Uh, oh, no, let's cancel that. Let's give it a name. I'll call it Charles Bird. Okay, dot JPEG. Then a dialog comes up that allows us to adjust the quality. And we can actually have it so that it does a preview inside of here. And if we move these dialogs a little bit out of the way, oh, I've lost my second, <laughs> I've lost my save button here. But we can actually see that preview happen here. Let's see if I can get that back. There it is. Okay. And as I drop this, it is losing quality, but you know what? It's actually, oh, okay, it's looking pretty good still. I find that the um, uh, sweet spot is between, say, 60 and 80%. Just to be safe, I don't know, I'll go like 75%. That's, that's, a, that's a good happy medium. And we'll export there. It tells us the file size is going to be 161 kilobytes. It looks pretty good to me. If this is something I'm putting on a website, it's going to be perfectly fine. If you're printing it, then you probably want to go closer to 90. But we're, we, won't, we won't be printing this. Click Export. And uh, we're done. Over and out.